Welcome, my friends, my family, my fellow gamers. It's your boy, Porter Rock 77, your only friend in these YouTube streets. My Anaconda don't. My Anaconda don't. Now, let me stop. Let me stop. Y'all see that uh, Polygon tweet? <laughs> she was funny. Uh, anyway. Anyway, what's going on, people, man? How's everybody doing? Shout out to the chat. Thank you for rocking out with me. All right. Hey, so Friday um 8 p.m eastern 60 frames no lag it's going to be popping because you know that's that's one thing about i love about gaming god damn there's a lot of crazy news crazy news but i want to shout out the chat robert mcleod you know hugo medina the and the destroyer manny gl what's going on skyfall gaming harry heck valkyrie what's up i do juegos thank you so much for showing up right now if you hear this little crackling in the background it's because i'm trying to eat some candy right now you know what i'm saying these reese's pieces these reese's not really buttercups miniature i don't know money for life was good people you know so we're going to talk about the topic but i just want to shout you guys out um we'll do a little small talk first before we get into the super bowl all right we, before we get into the big topic all right we'll do a little chit chat a little table talk my man man maki shush what the maki shi shimu oh shit Man, you, you guys really test my reading comprehension. Oh, snap. What's going on, man? Welcome aboard. Simply Deep was good. You know, how's everybody doing? Sneaky Snake. You know, Craig Harris. Grand opening. Grand closing. You know what I'm saying? What's good, everybody? Um, Yeah, everybody's on time, you know. um, Savage. What's good? DS Wilson. What's up, man? I'm glad you guys are here to make it. Um, If you don't mind, if you all would be so kind enough to hit the like button. And retweet this out on your favorite social media platform so we could get it going. Uh, so we'll do a little small talk. All right. We'll talk about real quick the MPD controversy. You know what I'm saying? Dollar sales versus unit sales. Now, all of a sudden, um, you got really you got two groups. You got Xbox gamers and Nintendo gamers. Obviously, Xbox gamers are going to side with the Nintendo gamers because, you know, Xbox ain't, ain't winning MPD and shit. But. They're making an argument that Nintendo won MPD because of dollar sales. So um, Nintendo, you know, the Switch selling at two ninety nine dollars um, generates more revenue than the combination of, I guess, the Pro and the Slim, primarily because the Slim is the probably the main seller of PlayStation, and it was one ninety nine. dollars But dollar value, um, Switch overall sold the most or earned the most dollar value. But the PlayStation 4 sold the most in terms of unit. Now... I always went by unit sales in terms of of um, who wins MPD. The reason being is it's the unit sales that grows the fan base. You know, the more users, the more people that go out and buy the platform, that creates bigger users on the platform, which means more game sales. So that's the long term effect. You know, dollar sales is just the individual console selling more, so you make more money. So for example, Switch was making let's say a hundred bucks more. You know. Per switch as compared to a 199 PlayStation 4 Slim, all right. But because PlayStation 4 has more users, they're gonna benefit in the long term in terms of bigger game sales across the board, you know. Last November, you know, when I won the bet between um Zaire and D, the bet was unit sales. If Z, you know, or a shout out to my man next gen 720, if next gen wanted to bet dollar sales, I wouldn't have made that bet. I would have been like, fuck no, I'm not making that bet. Only reason is because the Xbox One X was being sold at $500. So in order for PlayStation to beat out Xbox um, for dollar sales, especially the, long, the launch month of Xbox One X, it has to be a combination of one PlayStation 4 Pro plus one PlayStation 4 Slim to beat out the Xbox One X or three PlayStation 4 Slim sales compared to one. You understand? Because the, the X was $500. So I would have never taken that bet if it would have been who would have made the most money, you know, but the bet was who's going to sell the most, meaning, you know, when consumers wake up, you know, and sometime in the month of November and they go to the store or they go online and say, hey, I'm going to buy me a console. I'm going to buy me a gaming product, right? Majority of the consumers went in to the stores or they went to online and they picked PlayStation over the switch. And that's the main point. The PlayStation console was still the most sought off their platform for the month of November. They went in and said, hey, I want to buy a PlayStation. More people made that decision. Plain and simple. You know, 
this whole thing about you know dollar sales, whatever. Yes, it's important. It makes money, but the long term game is what you call the overall console sales because that's how many users that's on your platform, you know. And those are the people that's going to go buy out games. The more people you have on the platform, the more potential sales of software, you know, third party and first party that you're going to get. You know, that's just the bottom line. Especially now, also consoles doing subscriptions. That's more people that subscribe to your stuff, whether it's PlayStation Plus, Xbox Live Gold, or whatever Nintendo has. You know, but that was an interesting dynamic. Everybody's flip flopping. Obviously, if you're an Xbox guy, a Nintendo guy, you're gonna side with Nintendo one because they're not gonna give credit to PlayStation. If you're a PlayStation guy, obviously you're gonna say PlayStation one. You know, MPD PC gamers. I don't think they really care much. Maybe if they more favor one product over the other but for the most part it's whatever but here's the reality right say what they want there is one statement that that xbox gamers and nintendo gamers cannot say they cannot say in the month of november more people chose nintendo or xbox you know more people chose switch or xbox one than playstation 4 as their platform to buy in the month of november no one can make that point right the only point that can be said is the console people, the gaming product people bought the most, you know, the gaming platform people bought the most in the month of November was the PlayStation 4. And that's the bottom line. That's it. PlayStation continued to out, you know, grow their user base more than what Nintendo and Xbox did. And that's the bottom line. You know what I'm saying? Again, please retweet. I mean, please like the video. We got 19 likes with 112 watching so we could bump it up, whatever. All right. Um, what else? What else are we talking about? Um, what else I could chit chat about before? Getting into the main point, or should I just get into the main point? I think I'll just get into the main point. It makes no sense to to delay the inevitable, all right. But with that, let me share my screen because that's an important part. Give me a second, please. All right, hold on. Screen share. My laptop's been acting wonky. So I hope I don't accidentally close. All right. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. And we'll go right here. Damage control income. My man said damage control income. Let me do another thing. Let me pop out the chat real quick. So that way I could still keep up with you guys while we talking. Pop out chat. Yeah. All right, sorry, hold on. Let me do this real quick. Put this over here. Here we go. And boom. All right, here we go. All right, so we got the chat popped out. Okay, so if you see the screen right here, I'll put this link inside the description box. But this is Sony doing a video advertisement or recruitment video, you could say. Um, a recruitment video. Uh, Sony's trying to uh, hire... Uh, software engineer for their cloud backed um, network. CDN stands for fuck uh, cloud man. Fuck, I was just reading it before. CDN stands for it's right over here. I just saw it. content delivery network. All right, so let me bring the chat back up. All right, so the hire for the cloud you know back um, content delivery network. All right, so if you look at the video, they go into you know how great the work environment is, they're impressed. And what they're, you know, it's it's pretty much a recruitment, you know, trying to get people um, that have these skill sets that meet the requirement uh, to be part of their team. So here's a couple of just key points I got um, from the video from their, you know, little recruitment video. Number one, their project team is fairly small. They said they have a big infrastructure, but they have very small personnel. And this is an important point of what I'm going to bring on. Right. The second main point is they want to explore and innovate with products never before seen. All right. Um, they want to focus, um, on working and bringing the best when it comes to their core services and software. And they're saying that the projects that they are doing gets high visibility within the company of Sony. So real, so in a nutshell, whatever they're doing, they got high visibility, but, the, <clears throat> but their teams are small while, um, their infrastructure is very huge and vast according to the, um, recruitment video here so now let's look at the page a little bit let's scroll down a little bit okay and this is where we want to catch up in here right here so as it says right here um 
And I'll read it. As part of Sony Interactive Entertainment, the cloud gaming engineering and infrastructure team is leading the cloud gaming revolution, putting console quality video games on any device. As a staff software engineer on the CDN content, you know, delivery network cloud engineering team, you'll play a key role in design and development of distributed systems, which will help build a worldwide content delivery network. This is a technical leadership role where you will be leading in exciting initiatives and working with talented engineers to deliver cutting edge solutions for our end users. Responsibilities, leads and owns the development and deployment of large features and systems to support CDN functionality, ability to break high level features into appropriate tasks for other engineers to develop, responsible for designing high level architectures, triage and fix reported bugs, communicate estimates, schedules, issues, and dependencies to project and upper management, work with test engineering and QA to own end to end testing for functional part of area, continue to bring new ideas about technology to engineering team, mentor other engineers on development best practices, build and foster relationships with other CGEI teams to help improve development processes and uh, eliminate inefficiencies. Collaborate with other engineers or stakeholders in other SIE organizations. And they're looking for someone with a BS in computer science or equivalent work experience, 10 to 15 years of relevant development experience. All right. So that's the that's the thing. That's the advertisement. All right. We got a super chat going on. Thank you so much for the support. All right. We got my man Harry Heck with the super chat he says sony exclusives and game studios are assets for sony and for the most the ps platform microsoft exclusives are money grabs and micro achievements therefore ps now will never turn it into an x cloud copycat that's a great point um that's what we're going to talk about right now so let's turn back the time a little bit all right a time where playstation now was available on multiple devices you know before august 2017 when sony um limited ps now access to just pc and ps4 ps now was available on many blu-ray players it was available on the playstation 3 the playstation tv the vita bravia tvs and all samsung tvs right along with um pc then uh, for whatever reason they didn't explain they cut all those devices out and limited playstation now to pc and playstation 4 i advocated that the program or PS now is a failure. They're not doing too well. So they scaled it back. Um, you know, hell, there were times I advocated that they should just take, um, um, they should just take, uh, those servers and reconfigure them and make them into dedicated servers. And I advocated for that a long time. You know, I was never really into PS now or the idea that PS now was going to be a successful thing. I still kind of don't, but it is what it is. All right. My man, Jay Fonson, I'm delusional with this, um emma is gonna direct publish one day you'll see my man satya you're gonna see but, <laughs> but anyway so august 2017 they shut it down to just playstation 4 playstation 5 i mean playstation 4 and pc right given this recruitment video they emphasize that they're very small project team but with a large infrastructure. Shout out Lionel Bow again. Fight out Super Chat. Puerto Rock. We cooking them on Twitter. Who really won MPD? Look at the top 10 games sold this year. All on PS4. Who cares who grows more console? Yeah, that's what I just talked about. Um, You know, PlayStation 4. Most units sold. MPD winner. You know, but it is what it is, man. Everybody's going to do their own narrative. At the end of the day, PlayStation grew um, the user base, which will lead to more game sales. Thank you for the Super Chat, Lionel B. Appreciate it. Now, with the PS Now... The infrastructure, right? According to this recruitment video, uh, they have the large infrastructure, but they're only full team. So using that information, then looking back, most likely the real reason that they shut down so many devices for PS Now is simply because they don't have the manning to manage the network. So that it, so it most likely could have been a manning issue, a manpower issue on what they need to do to maintain the service, right? So chances are they limited the devices because due to the manpower of what they have to control PS Now and grow and make it better, whatever. And it seems like based on this, again, this is just um, a job, you know, a job application or whatever we want to call it, recruitment job, whatever. It does stay right there, games on any device. So that's literally what it means, games on any device, you know. Now, the question is, and this is the number one thing, and this is the number one thing everybody's talking about, can this go on Xbox, right? 
just like I said. Now, there are people that are saying Game Pass is going to be on PlayStation, you know, and Jay Funds really, you know, he's in the chat. I said Game Pass will not be on PlayStation because Sony's not going to allow the service where you can play third party games without going through the PlayStation network. They're not going to allow that. Microsoft's not going to allow the same thing either. They're not going to allow PlayStation now on their Xbox console because you bypass the third party games on their service. Okay. So you're not going to see Game Pass on PlayStation. You're not going to see PS Now on Xbox because those are two things that can cut into the third party revenue each platform is trying to maintain. It's not going to go on either. Now, what I said, and I have to repeat this a million times over and over and over, is direct publishing games. I still think Microsoft will one day direct publish games on PlayStation simply because, right, Satya, the head, of, the head CEO of Microsoft, I don't think he cares about Xbox in terms of it being the dominant platform within the console market. I think he just looks at it as just another device in the sea of other devices, you know? And I think Phil Spencer, and this is just my personal opinion, will have a hard time talking with Satya, talking him out of not putting games on the console market with the majority of the consoles, which is Sony and Nintendo, they reign supreme. You know, I don't think Satya cares about, you know, Xbox console sales. I think he just sees it as a device. This is all it is. And that's all. You got Xbox, you got cloud, you got PC, you got Nintendo, you got PlayStation, you got everything. All right. That's all he wants. Okay. I think I was read um, in one article talking about Satya. I think they gave him like something of the year, not Phil, but there was another article that put, it was, in fact, it was smooth. Kid Smooth added me and Black Bond on an article talking about, you know, something positive about Microsoft, right? And he says, you know, you know, joke, you know, he's just throwing pot shots at us. Kid Smooth's like, oh, but I thought Puerto Rock and Black Bond knew what's best for Microsoft. When you actually read the article, the article doesn't talk about Xbox or gaming at all. It talks about Satya and why he did with the, you know, the Microsoft um, company as a whole, right? One of the things they talk about was putting Microsoft Office on Mac machines, you know? When Microsoft Office used to be exclusive to Windows as a selling point, you know? Satya and them, or the people them, they change all that. They said, screw it. You don't want Windows? Fine. But you were still going to sell you the productivity software that we make and sell. And, and that decision grew Office into one of the biggest portions of, you know, the Microsoft company. They took software that was exclusive to the Windows platform and they decided to put it on Mac, which was an Apple product, you know, called competing, you know, whatever, you know, Mac OS or whatever. That's a competing OS to Windows. Microsoft did not care because they saw the bigger picture. There are people who are going to play, who are going to, what you call it, stay on Mac. They're not going to change. They prefer MacBook. They prefer Mac OS. So why is Microsoft going to miss out on Microsoft Office sales. Here you go. Take it. People stay on Windows. People who stay on Windows, stay on Windows. People who stay on Mac, stay on Mac. Both are supporting Microsoft Office. You know? And that was in the article that hilariously Kids Move sent to me. And that was pretty funny. You know, I saw that weird because the article had nothing to do with gaming. But it had more to do with Microsoft and its IT infrastructure and everything Satya was doing to that. So I was like, okay, that's pretty simple. The main thing I'm saying is, Satya, you guys you guys got Satya twisted, you know, right? Remember, this is the man, and this, again, this is from the Xbox community. You know, this is, this is, this is, um, uh, through the Xbox community that Phil spent alive within a Microsoft platform and that he created this whole idea or whatever. OK, so according to you guys, Satya was ready to snap his fingers and Thanos the whole project of Xbox. That's that's the Xbox community with the what you call it on 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 the insider tips and Phil, you know, party chats with y'all, whatever. That's that's from the Xbox communities, you know, insider tips that Satya was ready to nix Xbox. Phil came in as a white knight, saved the brand, came up with a great idea and Satya is all about it. So Satya's not about Xbox. He's about money and how to best leverage every platform out there and whatever. So my point was always been direct publish. Now, there is a logical reason not to direct publish to PlayStation. That's because you're worried about console sales. That is the only legit business strategic reason, you know, to not publish on Nintendo and PlayStation. You're still concerned about the sales of the Xbox console and you're trying to keep it away 
from PlayStation Nintendo, you know, from being competing consoles. Again, I don't think Satya is that person. I think he don't. I think he sees Xbox as just a device. You look at the big global picture of consoles, Nintendo and Sony, PlayStation own the lion shares. They are the majority of what gamers play on consoles. You put Microsoft software on those platforms, they're going to make money off that. And that will not impact any other venue. It's not going to impact Microsoft games on PC. It's not going to impact Microsoft games on cloud or whatever. All of that stuff is going to stay money. They're going to make money in every single avenue and approach. I think the only key to what Microsoft needs to do, you know, is they need to spoon feed it. They're not going to jump in next year and be like, oh, we're putting games on PlayStation. No, the world's not ready for that. But like I said before in my other video, I don't go too much in detail about this. I want to cut this short with, in terms of that conversation. You know, Microsoft slowly is going to try to get a world where everybody's used to playing games on any device. And then no one thinks twice of playing these Xbox games on Nintendo and PlayStation. And this is eventually going to happen. I mean, even right now, people aren't even calling Xbox a console anymore. A lot of people are now accepting the idea that Xbox is actually a platform and not a device. It's, you know, even though Xbox from the start was a console, but now it's just a platform and then everything sees under this. All right. But now moving on um, with this. OK, so. At this point, there's nothing, there's no reason to believe that Sony's not be trying to attempt to put their games on phones, tablets. I don't know if they're going to do TVs again, whatever. But they say any device, right? PlayStation now. OK. But now here's a couple of things I see that their strategy, how can I say this? this? They're not doing it as good as Xbox. Let's put it that way. If we're talking strictly PS now, um, Harry Heck, thank you for the super chat. He says EA access got into Xbox. Why was that MS wanted to lose some EA third party revenue to get gamer mindshare? Not because it would be an economically beneficial EA access got onto Xbox. Was that MS wanted to lose some EA third-party revenue to get Gamer Mind share? Not because it would be. To be honest, here's the thing. Third-party revenue, here's the thing with that one. Who's actually selling the most multi-plats in the console space? Hell, in gaming, period. All right? The one who's selling most multi-plats is, is PlayStation. You know? Most of the EA games are sold on PlayStation. Most of the Ubisoft, Activision, and all that, you know? So Microsoft's trying to find a way to come that to uh, to bring that into there, um, into their ecosystem. But I don't think Microsoft loses money by having EA access. I think Sony, I mean, I think Microsoft still makes money with through EA access subscription by having it on their platform. I don't think they get bypassed on money. I think Microsoft still makes money for anybody that has EA um, EA access subscription via the Xbox platform. I think I think Microsoft still gets a cut from that, right? Now, right now, PlayStation, if they plan to do this on any device, there's a couple of things they're going to have to fix. All right. I'm not advocating that she should do this, but they're doing some things wrong. They're not doing it right. At least not like the way Microsoft is doing. It, all right. The one thing they're doing wrong is they're not putting their big games day, day and date on the PlayStation Now network. They're just not at this point. A lot of games you're not getting on the PlayStation Now. Now, look how Microsoft's doing with their cloud stuff. You know, uh, Microsoft released like a two, three minute video about xCloud, right? They're advertising xCloud as no different than their console. OK, that means you get to do everything. You get the games day and date. You get everything. Pretty much it's the Xbox console without the Xbox console. Right. So they're doing it right. You get games day and date, gears, whatever. You'll get Game Pass, everything. The only difference between that and the console is you're streaming the games. You're not actually downloading them and installing them. Everything's being done on the servers, right? So that's xCloud. xCloud is pretty much Xbox, you know, uh, similarities to an Xbox console. Only difference is you don't have a hard drive. You're not downloading anything. Everything's being streamed, but you get access to everything to include Xbox Live Game Pass. So if you're playing multiplayer, you won't even be able to tell the difference between an xCloud gamer or a gamer that's playing on xCloud or a gamer that's playing on Xbox other than maybe latency, lag, and stuff like that. But let's pretend, you know, the service is good, no issues, and stuff like that. You won't be able to tell the difference between the two, right? PlayStation is not like that at all. PlayStation, I mean, to be honest, you can't even say PlayStation now. I mean, PlayStation now, technically, is not even the equivalent of a PlayStation 4 and stuff like that, right? Because PlayStation now, 
a lot of the games PlayStation 4 has is not on PlayStation Now. So PlayStation Now is not a good alternative to getting a PlayStation console at this point in time. If Sony wants to make PS Now a good alternative to owning the console, they have to put their games day and date, meaning all the exclusives, and they have to make sure all the multiplats are there day and date along with the console. So now let's look at some of the games right here. This is the website for PlayStation Now. This is um, all their games, right? I was looking at some of the stuff. Let's start out with, I'll start out with something simple. Um, M will be the show, right? I started out like that. This is all the games that start with M. They don't have not one MLB the show game on PS now. And I thought, all right, maybe it falls under the show. So let me start with T, right? I thought it was that. Okay. If you look, the uh, the the you ain't gonna see the show. It's a lot of PS3 games. But as you can see, the show's not there. So I was like, God damn, they don't even have a you know Sony's exclusive baseball game. They don't have any of them from any year. None of the baseball games are here. So I'm thinking, all right, do we have which Uncharted they have here? They have Uncharted 2, 3, and Drake's Fortune. So they don't, they have Until Dawn, that's a PS4 game, but they don't have Uncharted 4 or Lost Legacy. Okay. I know recently, three months ago, they put Bloodborne. Right. And they even put New next to it. Um, right here. There you go, Bloodborne. They put New. Now keep in mind, this game, I bought a PlayStation because of Bloodborne. And that was like three years ago in 2015. You know what I'm saying? This game doesn't have the new God of War. They have the older ones. Right? See, God of War HD, God of War 2, God of War 3 Remaster, God of War Ascension, which is the PSP games, Chain of Olympus, Ghost of Sparta. Oh, well, Ascension's the last PS3 game. Chain of Olympus, Ghost of Sparta were the PSP games. Right? There's no new God of War. And this is what I found funny, too. So you see Gravity Rush remastered, so they have the remastered, but they don't have part two, so they don't even have that, all right? Um, look at this one. This is real interesting. There's no Destiny here. They don't even have Destiny 1 on PS now. No Destiny. Not even the first one. Hold on. Destroy all humans, see? No Destiny. As you can see, there was no Division. See, no Division. Call of Duty. You see, no Call of Duty at all? No other Call of Duties. I was like, do they have Battlefield? They have Batman, Arkham Sama, Arkham City, Arkham Origins, but they don't have Arkham Knight. No Arkham Knight? No Battlefield? They got Beyond Two Souls. They got Bioshock, Bioshock Infinite, PlayStation. The majority of this stuff is PlayStation 3 games and PlayStation 2 games. You know what I'm saying? The point I'm trying to make is this is not a very appealing service at this point in time to say, hey, I don't need a PlayStation console. I can get PS Now and play all the games. In order for that statement to be true, you need these games to be day one, day and date. Um, uh, what you gonna call it? Um, to fix it, to be a to be a competitor. You know, definition inside is P Rock Logic. Games ain't there right now, so everything is fine. No genius. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is no one's going to say I don't need a PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 because I got PS now. Well, if you make that choice, you don't even get baseball. You know, they have to go in and make these games day one, day and day for both the PlayStation, you know, the Sony published games and the multiplats right now. I mean, hell, even something as Red Dead, which is the biggest game right now. There ain't no Red Dead 2 in here. They got Red Dead 1, which is the PS3. See, Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption Nightmare. But there's no Red Dead 2, so imagine, and there's definitely, they don't have the new Spider-Man from Insomniac. So imagine if a person goes, you know what? I play on the PC, I don't need a PS4. I'm going to just play PlayStation games, I'm, um, you know, via PS Now. And that's a sale, we're not going to get into latency, or that's not the preferred method. We're just going to say, you know, they're able to play. Look at that. They don't got Spider-Man. You have to wait two, three years, four years for this, you know. So for Sony to fix this, they need to put their games day and day for both multi-plats that the PlayStation console get and day one exclusive or the day one publishing games, okay? Microsoft, that's what they're doing to make their xCloud enticing. Their xCloud, again, is pretty much an Xbox 
but everything is just being streamed. So it's going to have all the bells and whistles, all the day one Microsoft published games, all the multiplats are available on that. Okay. We have to see if Sony's idea. Now, here's my argument on why, and this is again my argument on why I don't think Sony's going to put day one multiplats on PS Now. And I was talking about this yesterday on Zaire's podcast. All right. I'm going to talk about this on Zaire's podcast. All right. And I'll just use a calculator right now. Okay. So you can see the numbers. All right. I was saying Spider Man at 60 bucks, right? So 3.3 million copies. Mm -hmm. So that's 3,300,000 copies, right? So you can see a year just in those three days, 3.3 million in just three days. Spider Man generated revenue of $198 million. You know what I'm saying? And that's just three days. That's what Spider Man did. And we're not talking about the bundles collecting edition. It's just at sixty dollars, right? Z was saying, you know, at two million subscribers, right? Two million subscribers, right? Paying ten dollars a month, right? That's twenty million dollars a month times twelve months would generate two hundred forty million per year. Now, keep in mind. You got 240 million per year. That means the whole entire year with 2 million subscribers, right? Game Pass generated 240 million subscribers, whatever, right? But Game Pass includes like 200 something games. So this, all this is being split in some form or fashion with all those games because Microsoft have to cut in all the third party developers that, that support this platform, right? Okay. Spider Man in just three days, like I said, 198 million. So the difference is just 42 million. So there's a 42 million difference between Game Pass. 42 million difference between Game Pass, right? And three days of sales for Spider Man. And I'm just using three days. Imagine if I stretch out Spider Man for one month. Okay, I'm again, and that was the point. I think it took post up and Z a while, but I told them I'm just talking three days, 72 hours versus 365 days of Game Pass, 72 hours, one game, whatchamacallit, blew it out. 198 million on just three days. Imagine if I were to use one month of Spider-Man sales. One month, okay? I said between God of War three day sales, which was also 3 million, and Spider-Man sales of also 3 million, those two games outclass Game Pass. Now include Detroit, MLB The Show, and just a few other exclusives. Four or five games just destroyed it. How is my math wrong? I just did it on the calculator. 2 million subscribers in Game Pass can outdo God of War and Spider-Man. You know what I'm saying? What makes sense, at least for Sony, with games that sell this high, right? You initially sell it as direct sales, you know, just like what they're doing now. Get the sales that you can for the next two years, right? All right? Just like Uncharted, right? And then two, three years later, put it on PS Now. I also need a link. Give me a second. Let me let me let me stop sharing my screen. Let me do this. Oh, we're gonna have fun with here. We're gonna about to entertain because I'm gonna get. J Fonz up in here. I guess this is the prequel to this is the prequel. Alright. Are you guys not entertained? Alright, this is gonna be fun. All right. Okay, the ones the ones that are on Game Pass, I say no, like Bloodborne. 
Bloodborne's not exclusive. Hey, what's going on? What's up? What's up? Hold on. Let me um, let me make sure I get set up. Uh, let me let me adjust your mic level. Yeah, I'm 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 a bit um sick, so uh, I'm getting, my voice is kind of tore up. Oh shit! The 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 mic of of YouTube, the voice of YouTube. Oh shit! I hope you feel better. How about the kids? Are the kids okay? Um, nah, we've been passing it back and forth. It's oh, that fucking sucks, especially kid flu. That's yeah. Just- yeah. And um, by the way, before I I want to preface this uh, by saying that uh, me and P uh, and me and P Rock here are good friends. There's oh. no animosity here at all. So. Um, He's lying. This filthy Xbox can't stand me. <laughs> <laughs> but my destruction, uh, but my destruction of your argument will okay. remain. Okay, go okay. ahead. Here's, here's what I gotta say. All right. Now, you, with your math, there, you're doing, an, uh, you're basically doing an either or scenario, which it's okay. definitely not. Game Pass is doing well on its own, but they're also still selling exclusive copies. They're also still selling these games within Game Pass as well. Um, all that is is just extra revenue. And if PlayStation Now were to do something similar uh, with um, uh, their streaming service, now this isn't downloading the games to these devices. We all know that this X Cloud even is just streaming to devices. So you're going to get a downgraded product there. You're not going to get the best of the best, which still makes the consoles attractive. Um, it's business, and it, it makes total sense. They look if. If this works decently on mobile devices, I can I can see this taking off and, and making money for both companies. I don't see why this this is a problem at all for um for any of these companies. I don't see why it's a problem for people out there to understand that the future of um the gaming industry is going towards this route. This is why so many companies like Google, like uh, Microsoft, like now PlayStation, Sony is looking into hiring more people to beef up that infrastructure to go ahead and do this. They're they're putting more money into this because they see the potential profit margins here and they're huge. So that's why they're going towards this route. It's it's obvious. Okay. So my only argument was about because unlike Microsoft, Sony games, they're massive sellers this gen. You right? Not like not even Halo was able to do three million in three days. No game on Xbox, no exclusive. You know, the closest maybe the multiplayer like Red Dead or <laughs> Call of Duty. Those are the closest ones on the Xbox console that could push these level numbers. You know, if you got these games that are super big sellers, you know, all right, that, that are proven to sell huge, putting them mm. on on, a, on PS now, all right, for a ten dollar a month service, there's gonna it's gonna in its own right, there's gonna be less sixty dollar sales. Okay, yeah. Like me, no, like no, me, no, like if no, like, like no, for example, no, I just yes, wanna say but- I'm just let me just make this point. If PS now because PS now now does PS4 download, I could you, like the PS4 games you could digitally download directly to your console now, right? If Sony puts these big blockbuster exclusives, The Last of Us and all that, day and day, I would sign up for PS now because why would I pay sixty dollars? See, but I, I don't think Sony is looking at downloads um, to your console. I think they already did it. it. It's already done. Yeah. Well, I, I think what they're planning now. To... you could download Blumboard, but not on PC, well, on, but on, on the your, console, you could download on, on PS4 your, games. Your, yeah, but that's on your console. I'm talking about on other devices. Not, not even Xbox is going to do that, you know, on other devices. So honestly, they're still going to make more money. They're still going to make money regardless. Yes, will, the, will there be some sales that are lower um, for some of these games? Sure. But at the same time, there's still going to be people buying these uh, physical discs. Even there's still people going to be downloading it digitally without, you know, just paying that sixty, paying that sixty dollar price tag. Um, this is all just an option that's going to get people um, just excited to play games. On, on well, different- look at this two scenarios. Scenario one, right? You release your exclusives, these big killer exclusives, right? Digitally, you know, physical and digitally, but you don't put it on PS Now. Until like two years later, because by that time, anyone who wants to, anyone who wants to play The Last of Us bought it already. Now okay, but, you put it on PS Now. I'm just saying, listen. Now you put it on PS Now for the people who were not no intention of getting this game. Pretty much, sales died off. It's already yeah. it's already cut the blow line. Yeah. Now you but, put it on, and you still get the same PS Now sales. 
And, and 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 you can yeah, and that's that's provided it's the same PS Now service. But obviously, with this job listing here, you can see that they're trying to put more money into this. They're trying to get better. That's why they're asking for at least yeah. But the but the article don't mention putting games day and day. No, they didn't say not. that. No, 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 it's it's not saying that. But I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. It's inevitable. This the the future of the gaming industry is going towards this route. They want a continuous revenue stream. They they want people to be hooked on this. They want this Netflix style business model. And who better to do it than Sony? To be honest, I mean, think about it. They have the exclusives to actually get people excited to buy a service like that. I could see them doing the same thing and being very successful at it. I I just don't see why um, fanboys get up in an uh, uproar about this and argue about this. It's like when Microsoft was, was doing it, like with Game Pass. Yeah, I think I think it's a good thing. It's just another way to make money. I mean, when you say that they're not going to have exclusives, I've heard people say that, you know, if, if Sony puts their games on other devices day and date, then they won't have exclusives. They still have exclusives to, to their console. It's not like these exclusives are going to Xbox. They may be on a mobile device, but again, it's a downgraded version of the game. It's not going to be the best of the best. You can only get that best version on PlayStation. Yeah, That's but I, yeah, but I'm not talking about those points. I'm talking about just the sell of the game itself. That's what I'm talking about because I understand Xbox because even keeps even Phil Spencer pushed it in. A lot of games don't sell, so those games get it. Like Hellblade, Hellblade is a perfect example of a Game Pass Day One game. Okay. It only sold 250k. That's the perfect type of game to put yeah. these type of games that people just won't buy Day yeah, One. But like, the, put it this way: The Last of Us. That game's gonna sell huge day one. Okay, I understand what you're saying, you but again, the ability to get it for ten dollars in one month. Yeah, I, again, though, I, I think it's not an either or thing. I think there's still a lot of sales that, that are there for sixty dollars, and there's still sales there for Game Pass. And to, to be honest, I mean, if you think about it, as a company, Xbox wouldn't uh, put a, in a service like this and put all their games day and date if it wasn't making them money. I it's know that. Their money. But here's the difference. Microsoft's not, Microsoft is not selling software like Sony. That's the difference. Halo is not. Halo did not do God of War Spider-Man numbers. It's no. not that game no more. This That no, was no. 360 gen. No, no, Halo no. didn't push the big numbers it did. Gears definitely didn't push the big numbers. They don't have the software this gen. That push, but especially Rise, Dead Rising 3, um, Quantum Break, what else? Um, Recore, um, Phantom Dust, but game after looking, game after game were not these big, yeah. super huge sellers. But at the same time, you're also looking at half the console base, uh, less than half. I and, agree. And, and Microsoft. That's the big issue there, too, that's I, over here. And Microsoft sees that, too. So their best bet. Is Game Pass because they realize they're not going to get this 80 million, 100 million console user base unless Sony royally screws up in Nintendo. They're never going to see those numbers again. Yeah. Well, they're not going to see those numbers. Well, so, they, so they're they going to find other ways to capitalize on software sales. So yeah, Game Pass is a huge one. PCs are a huge one. And xCloud is a huge one. Yeah, Sony's yeah. not in that position like Microsoft. I'm not saying you're, you're what you're saying is impossible. I'm not saying it's never going to happen because who the hell knows what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. I'm just saying, based right now, Sony games are selling a lot. I just think it makes yeah. more sense. Launch it mm -hmm. on our console. Get that. Even if it's like two years, get the big push because it's going to sell. And then, okay, now it's on GamePad. I mean, it's on PS yeah. Now. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else yeah. didn't bother to get it. Yeah. Here you go. And, and that's the thing. It could be in two years. It could be in three years. Who knows? They've got a lot of beefing up to do with that infrastructure for sure, for yeah. sure. But at the same time, I'm just telling people, it doesn't really matter because this is inevitable. This is going to be the future of the gaming industry. It's. It, I'm just hoping personally that we still have traditional consoles in the next generation, not next generation, but the generation after. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I don't want everything to go streaming or discless or any of that nonsense. Like I, I want to have traditional consoles, uh, you know, forever. If here's, I had here's another point. What's the point of the discless? Like rumors of a discless Xbox, right? What's the point in that? Like, I don't get that. Yeah. Unless they're talking about a cloud yeah. stick and they just code yeah. naming it yeah, this list console. It is. is it is that, that it like is. a $50 cloud stick? Yeah. 75. Okay, that makes sense. If it's a $50 yeah. 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 stick, I get that. Yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah you just, can sell that thing for 100, 120. 129 to 149. It'd that be, makes sense. Man, that would be fucking mostly for game pass. It's for yeah. casuals. It's, it's, it, what Microsoft is doing is you introduce the baby 
to the stuff early. They get you into the ecosystem. You enjoy their ecosystem. And then you start graduating up. All right, now you want to play instead of playing a bunch of Game Pass games, uh, you're gonna you want to play something else that they don't have on Game Pass. And then if you're a child or something like that, mommy, daddy, can you give me this other Xbox? That's that's what they're oh, doing. But for what I for, for when I saw in the video talking about X Cloud, it seems like X Cloud is literally an Xbox. It's not like a, it it's not a it downgraded. <laughs> like you get everything. Like everything is like owning the console of your own home, except you don't have the actual console. You just got, but you get right. everything. You get access to every game. You get uh, access to every game mobile app. Yeah. You get you get access. You get access to Game Pass because this is the thing. A lot of this is the, from looking at the video. X Cloud is not Game Pass. It's literally an Xbox, which can include Game Pass if you want. Meaning, like let's say if you got the classic, right? You log on to whatever, however the UI is, right? You buy a game now. You have unlimited streaming access to that game, so it's kind of like buying the game, but you don't download it or physically well, install still, it. You would still have to buy it something digitally if it's discless. Yeah, just like it's like uh, unlocks. It gives you permission yeah. to play that game. Yeah. So it's like so you could also sign up for Game Pass. Well, like yeah, it's literally an you, Xbox console without the hard drive. Yeah, but you've noticed that every time, and I've noticed this, and people shout out people that I have follow me and I follow know this. Anytime Microsoft does something, I mean, if they if they start tying their shoes with you know the left side of their shoe first, they tie that first. They're going to assume everybody else is going to follow them. And, and like, look, you got they, they they are the the Phoenix Cardinals, the Arizona Cardinals of football when it comes to this gaming stuff. So they're not leading anything. Now I think Game Pass is a great idea. I thought it was a good idea when it first started. It's like you pay ten bucks, you get whatever had they had 80 to 100 games I, I think that's a great idea and like phil spencer said they are tracking they now have data that says more people are trying different games so they're going to keep doing it and they're making good money off of it so mm -hmm. um so yeah I, I think it's unfortunate look this sony sony did a had a nice article in 2016 on euro gamer they are going to follow the traditional market as far as consoles that's what they've declared They've doubled down with their new president of PlayStation on single player first party games. That's not going to change. So now are they adding more stuff to beef up like you just like you just said about PS now and, to, and like Jay Fonz was saying to put games on instead of just having games on the Xperia phone. And if they come out with some kind of tablet, you can now play them on a Samsung phone or I or Apple. That's what they're going to do. They have to do that. I agree with that. That's just. That's just good business. But I'll be honest. I hope I hope they push, I hope they support PC one day. I, I think they are. I think this. I hope. I'm talking about like I'm talking about not PS now. I'm like native download, like oh, what Microsoft okay. is doing. Maybe and, and they may, but if they, do I hope that, they do that. They then that would, be my, that would be my only go to platform from there on out. Because at but that wouldn't point, they have to beef up what they're doing if they were going to start putting things on PC. They have to beef it up to even see if it, because like you said, they may have the, and like Jay Fon said, they may have an apparatus in place, but like you said, Porter Rock, they got small teams. Mm. I mean, well, so the cloud thing, I think, I think for a well, PC, it would just be porting. They would just need yeah. people just to do the port job yeah, to the possibly, to PC. Yeah. And, and you got to remember when you say that, uh, you know, that that would be your only platform of choice. It, it may change a lot of people's minds about going to PC, but at the same time, there's going to be a lot of people like me that still don't want anything to do with PC. They've yeah. been there, done that. And I just, I don't care for the experience at all. Um, uh, yeah, I miss the 60 frames. I miss the 100 plus frames. But yeah. in the end, like, you know, consoles, I've just been more of a console guy. Call me a pleb, call me whatever you want. It's just, it's in my nature to be more of a console guy. I mean, everybody has that. I mean, I'll just be like, you know, if well, I could get PlayStation, if I could get, you know, if Sony, if Sony pulls the plug, just for me, you got Microsoft published games, Sony published games, and then the PC exclusives, and I could set it up to where I can ensure I'm always going to play at a minimum 60 frames. I would just, I wouldn't go back to consoles because I wouldn't see a need to. I would be like, why would I need to buy a console? Because, like well, I said, look, to me, they're all to me at the end of the day, they're all boxes with an input device. Yeah, that's all they really are. I, they're just, they're I'm just living, a box you plug to a monitor. I'm living TV. proof. I'm living proof of why you stay on console. I'm why? putting together a PC. I bought a motherboard off of Amazon. Once the PC starts getting put together, the motherboard is no good. 
So now I have to buy another motherboard. Dude. Why? So oh, I understand oh, why people come oh, 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 to replace to right for the like upgraded cards and all that. Well, no, it's just it would not. Uh, it, it may not have had the updated uh, BIOS. Oh, so now also I'm having to get another motherboard. Yeah, and, and again, everything else worked. He was like, I mean, there is a little bit of there is a little bit more effort in PC. That's obvious. You yeah. know, it, it is yeah, an so effort. Understand. Like, 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 like console is literally <laughs> just pull it out the box. Correct. Plug it, plug it into, into your network, network and then let mm -hmm. the thing let the thing do its own magic and it'll yeah, eventually it'll it up with everything. Hey, um yep, I, I, I gotta go. I gotta take care of my daughter and myself. Right, man, hey, take care. Take care, man. Hey, but, yeah. uh, I just want to say before I go, um, Xbox is the best box. Later Ouch. Later. Denied. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, hold up, this is a super chat. Man, Harry Heck. Um, thank you for the super chat, Harry. He says Xbox. Double single A and double A online multiplayer server based games has two to five years relevancy period. PlayStation triple A single player games has eight to 15 year relevancy period. I would say, I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, but when you think about it, look at some of the multiplayer games Microsoft released, like the big multiplayer games that are memorable. If you look back, it was like Gears of War 3, one, even oh, one, yeah. even Halo 3. You know, yeah. those were the big memorable, whatever. This gen, ugh. <laughs> it's like, when people telling me they put four hundred, when people keep telling me they put four hundred dollars here at these, I'm like, how? Let's see if these and that. Oh, the K, I kept getting stuck in the sink. You know, mm. my character kept on being. I'm like, I'm, they made a game where you get stuck in the sink. This is great. You know. <laughs> And so Harry Hack, thank you for the super chat. He says nobody wouldn't care about CFDs and State of Decay 2 in 2025 on next cloud. While in 2025, God of War Horizon Dawn will still get new extended life with PS Now and release of 2025. I would say definitely the single player is very memorable, you know. But Sony, if they really want to make this, you know, if they really want this to blow up, if they want PS Now to blow up, they have to change their policy. They have to put games day and date. They have to put God of War day and day. They have to put Horizon Zero Dawn 2 day and day. They have to. Because right now, see, the, the, I would say that's the big difference between xCloud and PS Now. xCloud mm -hmm. is day and date stuff. So it's literally just like owning the console, right? PS right. Now is not like owning the console. They don't even have baseball on there. None. Sure. None of the major league games, major league, none of the MLB, the show games are there. Not even 2015. Like, yeah. you're on PS Now, and you're not playing probably the best sports exclusive that PlayStation have, that a lot of people, they buy PlayStation because it's the only yeah. place to get the baseball game. You oh, can't I do don't it. Disagree. Yeah. I, I mean, in order for that to really... I mean, what they're selling right now, I guess, is what, like 600 games? That's the selling point, or if you yeah. want to try the service. That's it right now. So if they they may feel well, if we keep it at 600, 650, wherever it's at now, that may be enough to get people to try it, to try it. Because that's all they're wanting people to do is just to try it out. That's mm. like me with Amazon Prime Video. It was free for 30 days. I'm like, well, I'll try it. It's free. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, but they just want people to try it. Xbox is the same way. If, mm. if they have two to three new SKUs, mm. they want you to go ahead and this try one of the skews yeah. that's it you don't have to if they want you in that ecosystem you get game pass then like you you you've articulated before you quote unquote forget that you're paying it then they have all those specials you can get it for 5.99 3.99 sometimes you can get it for a dollar for one month it's just that's what they're wanting yeah right now we need to, to be <laughs> right now we need to see how sony is going to look into the future and how important the playstation console is are they also eventually going to be looking into just any device and treat place at any device? Because right now, just right now, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, on what we on the info we have right now, okay. For example, me, and this is just me, I won't be getting an Xbox Scarlet next gen because there's no oh, yeah. reason to. I said so to me, for me, you know, mm -hmm. after Microsoft announced, you know, exclusives to PC, I'm like, I'm not getting a Microsoft console. I'm not spending four or five hundred dollars on a Microsoft console. I'd rather just get a PC. Still get access to the games, correct? You know what I'm saying, and I won't be asked out on any of those situations, you know. Yeah, so that's Makes my sense. those are my that's my view, that's my opinion, you know. What I'm saying that's why I'm going um the PC route as my secondary platform. I'm not going PC because of the power, even though it has it. That's not my main reason. My main reason is the gaming you heard you say the gaming experience. Yeah, by, by me going PC. I am not missing out on any Xbox games, all right? Correct. So I still get access to all the Xbox games plus PC exclusives 
and yeah. Microsoft publish exclusives, which is that's yes. the crazy part. You understand? Yeah. I can't do that with PlayStation at this point because PlayStation right. now doesn't satisfy that. I'm not going to wait three years to play Spider-Man 2 or the next God of War or Horizon Zero Dawn 2. I'm not waiting for that. I'm definitely not going to miss out on MLB The Show. I'm not right. missing yeah, out on any of that. What a hundred yeah. days! Yeah, the next MLB come out a hundred days. Yeah, I believe. And, and <laughs> it doesn't have any of them. It doesn't have any baseball. So PS Now is not a good alternative to the PlayStation console experience. It's missing so much content from that on purpose. So yeah, on purpose. Sony's doing making the decision. So Sony right. is not putting most of their best stuff on time in a timely manner on the PS Now, if any at all. So that's not a good thing. But PC is definitely a good alternative to console to Xbox console because you get yeah. everything that the Xbox console has. Plus, more granted, it's a bit more expensive. But I don't want to deal with an Xbox Andrew. console where mm -hmm. I look at Microsoft and Microsoft decides, oh, we made another big game, but it's exclusive to PC. I'm like, you're not yeah. doing that to me. I'm not going to put up with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm right not going to put up. With Microsoft yeah. telling me to my face, we made a game, but you can't play it because you don't know Xbox. I'd be like, bro, yeah. it's your console. It's made by you. <laughs> well, if think you about if you're a huge Gears with fan. Every single title, then who will? Yeah. Well, if you're a huge Gears fan, you can't play the new real-time strategy Gears game. Yeah, that's, that's what that's that Gears That's exclusive. Yeah. You know? That's exclusive to PC. And now they can say, oh, it's going to come to the regular Xbox. And they you might they might be right. But yes. as of right now, it's not. So yeah. in order, you know, so in order for me to play both, because I like I like XCOM and stuff like that. So I'm going to play Gears Tactics. Yeah, that's my not. issue. That's my <laughs> issue. Best case scenario, it might come to Xbox. Hell no, I'm not going to put up with that. You drop <laughs> four or five. Apparently, there might be the Anaconda $700 Long Snake Edition. You're not just paying $700, $600 for the Anaconda, right? And my girl tells you this game might come to your platform. Like, what? Like, no, 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 no. That's not what we're doing here, you know? So that's why I'm like, I'm not going to deal with that. I'm going to deal with PC, and I don't have to worry about any of that. And plus, it's also good for my channel because this dog shit laptop is getting on my nerve. But that's the main yeah. thing. I'm not going to deal with buying an anaconda. That's pretty much Microsoft telling me we're going to snake your ass, Porter Rock. You know, no, you're yeah, not. You are not snaking me. <laughs> you're not going to do that. Not, I don't have that's to worry about the, that. That's the name of it. I, I like you're I said, I just, anaconda. I, you know, you're yeah, not going to screw me that. over. Yeah, I'm, I'm not at that stuff because it's nobody knows what their build is going to be. It's just all these people just all of a sudden yesterday just rampant speculation it was it was bad it was like the ebola virus yeah. bad you know i mean right now though based on the information we got it seems like sony's trying to push on any device so they're trying to push games we'll see how far the device goes but it seems like they're going to push anything but i will say this just like i said before it's not going to be game pass on playstation it's not going to be ps now on xbox because the two companies are not going to allow those services on their own platform because they compete with third party revenue well i think well I they're disagree. not going to allow that yeah, I disagree, and I, I think their Game Pass on uh, PlayStation, they'll just take third party off. That's uh, all they have I don't, think, do. I don't think Microsoft... I think it'll be easier for just direct publish then. Because then yeah, they're going to have to have... They're going to have to re, they're gonna have to reconfigure servers and or they're going to have to do weird shit. To me, and people... No, not really. people don't understand. <laughs> direct, like, like, direct publishing is just porting. It's not hard. Bandai Namco ports to three or four systems. It's not a hard concept because remember when they make these games for Game Pass and you know, all that, they first have to develop the game outright, and then they're gonna load it up on an XCloud server. Game Pass server is gonna be on Xbox Live where you could buy it digitally, and they're gonna print it on disc and ship it out. So it's already made. All they gotta do is take that code and port it over to other platforms that can. Well, take they, it. it won't. It won't matter where the code is coming from. Mm -hmm. I mean, if Gear, if Gears Five. I'm just using that for example. If Gears 5 is going to be Gears 5. If it's going to be playable on a PlayStation, and I'm not saying that it will be, or something like that, I just think it's going to be the direct published games. I don't think it's going to be anything third party. So like Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, games that they published. That yeah, were, but I, I, think, but I, think, but I know what you mean, but I mean, yeah. they're probably smarter than us, but I think to do that, to stream or to Game Pass on PlayStation, and mm -hmm. just the first party titles, not the third party titles. They're gonna have to find a way to to have that Game Pass service configured to where. And I don't think Microsoft's yeah. gonna do the effort in that. 
I don't see Microsoft's going to put the effort. It's probably just easy for them to just make a PlayStation version and be like, here you go. Put it on the store and we're just going to make money off you. You know, but like I said, this is not something that would happen on PlayStation 5. I think this is more like a PlayStation 6, 7 type future. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think next gen, Microsoft's just going to worry about, you know, the Xbox. They're going to worry about PC. They're going to do X Cloud. I think they might even dip onto like uh, Macintosh, you know, Mac, Mac OS, mm -hmm. Apple, you know, the iMac and stuff. And they're whatever, kind of like what Steam did when they went on Mac. I don't, I, I see Microsoft doing the same thing. They're probably going to push. They're obviously, they're going to push on Android. I could see them trying eventually to go on iOS if Apple allows them to, you know. So I figure Microsoft's going to focus on all those devices, you know, over the next gen. That's, from, that's my, that's what I think. As far as Sony, again, we all we got right now is what the job placement, the recruitment video says. And it does say they're looking for engineers to put it on any device, you know. Yeah, but that's I mean their, they, that's their words. Yeah, because they that's they had that already. I they mean, had they, it already. I yeah. honestly thought, and I, I honestly thought they took it off because it was just failing. But after looking at the recruitment video, they just talk about how small their team was. So yeah. I think more realistically, the right answer. So I was wrong about PlayStation not failing. I think mm -hmm. it's more of they just didn't have the manpower to yeah. accommodate all these devices. So they just limited it to two devices, PC and, and PlayStation 4. And I guess just work on the enhancement, the performance, latency. Just I mean, I don't know how it is now, but I think maybe that's what they were doing over time. Just trying to get the... The cloud server, the guy guy cloud server is right. It that yeah, that makes well, more sense now based off just looking at the um recruitment video. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean they had they had the PS now thing on Sony television, and you used to be able to stream it to their phone, their cell phone. Yeah, now they had it on so Samsung think, TVs, yeah, and Samsung yeah. TV. So that yeah. that will come back. It just it'll it'll be it'll be better supported. And so Andrew Wilkins, like I said about Hellblade, that was done by Ninja Theory. That's a first-party studio from Microsoft. And I and yes, Microsoft could have killed that deal. Okay, they could have killed that deal. Just, just as Disney, when they bought Fox's studios, they killed three X-Men movies. They just killed them. Microsoft pump, they, 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 it's a that's a game. That is a first party Microsoft studio putting the game on a PlayStation. Yeah, but it was Here. already on PlayStation though. Yeah, it was already on PlayStation. It was already and it's gonna, yeah. Now here's so, my thing. Know. Here's my thing. So let me ask your opinion. So here's my thing. So Satya obviously sees these games selling on PlayStation because you know whatever game that Microsoft is contractually yeah. obligated to keep on PlayStation because you know like we happy few whatever whatever right. Right, they still right. get the data of how these games sell, right? And if Satya Nadella sees these Microsoft published games that they're contractually obligated to put on PlayStation because, you know, by the time they bought the studio, the deal was already done. So they just they just absorbed the contract, right? Correct. Which means in those particular games, they know how much they sell on PlayStation. If Satya sees that the PlayStation version is selling more than the Xbox version, you don't think that man will look at Phil and be like, listen, these games are selling better on PlayStation than our own console. Why won't we keep up the momentum and keep putting games on PlayStation console if we're making money off it? You oh, see what I'm saying? And that's what I'm trying to tell people, to look at things from his perspective, because he's, yeah. he's, he's not a fanboy for Xbox. Again, according to the Xbox community, or like as, as you say, Xbox community, right? Yes. <laughs> He was about to Thanos the whole division. He was going to Thanos it. He was going to yes. snap his fingers and not yeah. worry about it. And, and, and Phil Spencer came in like Captain America, came out with this brilliant idea, which got him a yep. promotion and yep. reignited yep. Xbox gaming. Yeah, so Sadia is not the dude. Canceled everything. Yeah. What? I said, first thing Phil had to do was he went in and started canceling projects. Yeah. Henceforth, scale bound, but we won't revisit that. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> But you see what I'm saying? So I'm yes, looking at yeah, Satya, yeah. like Phil, Phil, I don't see Phil being at the head of the table and having a discussion with Satya, especially if Satya is asking the questions like, hey, how are we going to take advantage of this huge console fan base Nintendo and Sony has around the globe? Right. I don't see Phil saying, oh, we're not. We're not going to do anything because they're <laughs> competitors, you know, and Satya is going to be like, well, Mac is a competitor and I still put office on it. 
So mm -hmm. what are we doing here? Because that's what they did. They didn't give a fuck if people didn't buy Windows OS. They, fine. You want to stay on Mac? Stay on Mac. But we're still yeah. going to give you the product to your software because that makes us money. You see what yeah. I'm saying? That's his mindset. That's Satya's mindset. Satya's mindset is to put everything and take advantage everywhere. He's not yeah. all into like, like same thing with Surface Tablet. Surface Tablet, you know, great selling product, great selling hardware. Oh, but, the, but, the, but the OS productivity software is available on Dell tablets and Toshiba tablets. Toshiba, yeah. Satya yeah. didn't keep those stuff away just so because he's worried about the sell of Surface. And then Satya that, that's said, not his mindset. Yeah. Well, go back to the X Cloud announcement. It was on YouTube. Yeah. Didn't Phil Spencer say the fact? I'm paraphrasing. I had it written down. Uh, he said the fact that there is software locked behind one media device is foreign to him. Yeah. I and, mean, yeah. Okay. So, so let's not let's unpack that statement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's behind one device. Yeah. So if it's behind the Xbox, it's foreign to him. He mm -hmm. wants you to play the games on the device you mm -hmm. want to play. I think that, I think Microsoft's I biggest I think Microsoft's yeah. biggest hurdle is just going to be acceptance on this idea. And I think eventually people will accept it. It's just going to take all the DMR. I mean, they are yeah. accepting the DMR right now. So they're going to accept it. I mean, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. That's just my belief. That's just what whatever. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But that's it. I'm going a, I'm to a cut it short. My man says you can keep Elmir the show on Xbox. What? Well, I have a quick question on. for you. Because you, you, you play Gears. I play what? You play Gears of War on your yeah. Xbox, right? All right. Yeah. My question is, is, would it be better to use the boomstick or the uh, rifle with the X with the uh, PlayStation gamepad when I start playing that. Oh, you're on terrible. the PlayStation. You're, you're terrible. You you are absolutely, <laughs> you are absolutely terrible. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll answer that question in 2029. Okay. <laughs> in 2029. All right. I'm gonna put a team together. I'm putting a PlayStation team together because I think this is happening in the next 18 months. No, that no, it it's not happening. I'm telling you, it's not even going to happen next gen. It's going to happen if it does happen, and I say if it does, it's going to be like the PlayStation Six and beyond. I think Microsoft's going to spend their time focusing on devices everybody has no issues with. You know, I think I think yeah. if they did, so, uh, you think it'll uh, happen? You, we just disagree on the timeline. Yeah, we're just you thinking it'll happen. Time. I think it's like PlayStation okay, because okay. cool. Microsoft is going to build their brand on all devices. That's what they're doing. So that way, we live in a world where. It's just Xbox gaming wherever. Like, no one's really associating it to one device anymore. It's just, like, it's everywhere. So yeah. then at, by that point, if Microsoft announced, hey, we're making games for Nintendo and PlayStation, and I, everybody keeps saying PlayStation, I'm saying both, because I think they're going to take advantage of Nintendo, too, because Nintendo's a huge seller also. So I, I'm saying both platforms, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's going to have an issue, because it's going to be like, well, shit, what took you so long? You, I mean, you had it everywhere else. I think I think when the industry looks at Microsoft, like, well, it's about time because you had the damn thing in every other single <laughs> device, man. And then I think that's what I think that's what Microsoft is just waiting for. To where when they do it, everybody's gonna look at them like, well, no shit, what took you so long? Vice, oh my god, fucking Xbox is ruined. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think that's I think I think that's I think that's the scenario they're waiting for. To where people will look at it more as, well, no shit, it only took you long enough. Yeah, well, I think the fact that Microsoft is going to do this, and we disagree on the timeline, that's been the biggest blow to the fanboys, at least on Twitter. They are just, they won't, they won't say. But you know what? I, I prefer them being, doing that, because yeah. then at least they understand exclusives matter. Because that's yeah. really what's about. <laughs> at least that. I mean, I'd rather have that than to hear these dudes say, oh, exclusives don't matter. It's all about the multi -plats. I'd rather see them be pissed off at people talking about Xbox games going to PlayStation than to hear the damage control of Jap Trash or Exclusives Don't Matter or Ratios or it's only sold 3.2%. None of that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I, rather, I appreciate this combo. <laughs> I used to bullshit combos of Jap Trash or Ratios or, or multi -plat sales. You got another super chat where you share. Yeah, today. Harry, what's going on? Thank you so much for the super chat. He says Spider Man will never go away from PS. Even how much of Sony Pictures Apple buy, the IP <laughs> belongs to SEE and not Sony Pictures. Puddles 
at Xbox Committee. Now, I will say this. <laughs> While the game rights does belong to SEE and not the picture studios, because this is specifically to the game, we don't know how long the deal is set for. You know what I'm saying? We don't know how long Marvel said, hey, Sony, you have rights to the game for X amount of time or X amount of titles. You know, and there could also be stipulations like how much the game sells, you know, because let's say Spider-Man would have bombed. There's probably a clause that says, hey, the game bombed. You no longer have the rights because you also have to Marvel has to protect their own self-interest in terms of the IP of the game. So I'm pretty this, this sure version, yeah. this I'm pretty version, sure every company. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's like clauses for shit like that for weird shit in case the game fails. Marvel could just pull back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, this this version of Spider-Man. Is staying on PS4. This this well, they, I'm I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, but, I'm talking about how long, how many more titles they can make in Spider Man. Oh, because it, it could it could be, it could be like a three game contract. Yeah, it could be like a three game yeah. contract, and then oh, after the third game, Sony can't publish anymore, even with this character. Like, the character in you know the Ultimate Suit or Advanced Suit, whatever you call it, may mm -hmm. not be in any other platform because it's that Sony thing and Insomniac thing. But yeah. they're not gonna make a part four if you know. Yeah. Or, the, or they could, but it'd be multi plat Or, yeah, or something like that. Better. Yeah, you see what yeah. I'm saying? So we don't know how far we don't know how far the Spider-Man deal with Sony and Insaniac and exclusive to PlayStation will go. We don't know how far. That's we don't know if it's game. Yeah. You know? Now, if, 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 uh, after the sale of this, Marvel might be like, fuck that. We're going to make seven <laughs> more. Like, you never yeah. know. But like, well, we'll, give you, we'll give you exclusive now. rights to five more Spider-Mans after this. Yeah. Well, Amy announced, Amy Pascal announced that Spider Man would be staying in the MCU for the foreseeable future. So that's that at least yeah. got settled by her. But I can't believe the, those fanboys in the comic book community pushed the whole Apple buying Sony pictures all because they want Sony to give Spider Man back to Marvel. Oh, yeah. That's why so, oh, yeah. Because apparently, I guess the rights is not transferable. Yeah, <laughs> so like if Sony, like if Sony sells Sony Pictures to Apple, the rights mm -hmm. to the movie doesn't go to Apple; it goes back to Marvel. So I guess that's like a little clause that Marvel also that if any point Sony sells their whatever, I think there's like two clauses. Number one, Sony has to make movies every so often of Spider Man, yeah. so they have to. So that's why you saw like the remakes or whatever. It's because they have to. They have to do something Spider Man. If they don't, the rights go back to Marvel. And I right. think also another clause is if Sony sells their picture division, the rights go back tomorrow. They cannot sell the rights to another. They don't have the right to sell the rights. Correct. But now that they're being friendly, they, they almost have a relationship the way Universal shares the Incredible Hulk yeah. with Marvel. Yeah. It's right. That's kind of where they're working to be. And Marvel is. And I don't okay think Marvel has that. an issue with that. I think if as long as yeah. Marvel has access to Spider Man whenever they want, you know. Mm -hmm. And what I also learned is Spider Man. The right Sony has is only to the movies. It's mm -hmm. not to like the animated or whatever. Yeah, not the animated. I didn't know that. It's, 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 they have it's, to sign off on it though. Yeah. Even because we went to see Spider Verse the other day. Yeah. And uh, that's Sony animation. Yeah. That wasn't Marvel. That was they. Yeah. They did it with Marvel's animation team. But yeah. Sony owns. If it says Spider Man on it, Sony has to come in and sign off. Mm -hmm. So you know, but. It's, it's, when you get into who owns the Peter Parker versus who owns the Miles Morales, yeah. that's how they got him in the first place. It was Kevin Feige got in Amy Pascal's shit and said, we don't need your version of, Sp of Spider-Man. We can just use Miles Morales. And Amy Pascal said, well, nobody will see it. And yeah. he said, look, we're Marvel. Everybody's going to go see it. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and Amy kind of backed down. But now yeah. that Amy's got Venom, in her pocket with making like 900 million yeah. she she's coming out little chest hell little little yeah. out the chin up <laughs> it only makes sense for sony to sign off with marvel marvel's the biggest thing man i think marvel's like literally the biggest movies over the last 10 years are marvel movies yeah. like across all movies all genres from serious movies whatever marvel movies are the biggest things period Compared to yeah, and it didn't start that way. Let's it didn't start honest. that way, but they just yeah, grew. Iron Man was, yeah, Iron Man did well. Captain America did a decent number. The Incredible Hulk movie with Ed Norton, the number was horrible. Yeah. And I then think, they did Iron I think, Man. Why do you think? Why do you think it turned? Was it Iron Man two or Civil or not Civil War or Winter Soldier? What do you it, think? It really? Iron Man two. No, Iron Man two. Iron Man two. Iron Man two. Iron Man two had to make a certain amount of money for them to greenlight Thor. 
Well, because okay. Iron Man 2 don't make, because Kevin Feige, because after they made Iron Man, Kevin Feige went in that studio, and this is before Marvel had their own studios. He went in there, he pulled his pants down, he whipped it out. He's like, look, we're going to do the Incredible Hulk. And he was feeling himself. And then Hulk didn't do that it number. Because it was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the one with Ed Norton, not the one with Eric Banner. Yeah. Um, Even the one with Eric Norton was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible, too. So guess what? They came back at him and said, well, grand opening, grand Go closing. Ahead. Grand opening, grand <laughs> closing. You got one but more he chance. Cut a deal. He cut a midnight deal and said, we'll do Iron Man 2. And if it does a number that you like, can we green light Thor? That's why at the end of Iron Man 2, spoiler alert, you see Thor's hammer. That's yeah. why it's there. So, yeah. but it had to do a certain number. If if, it, if that does doesn't do well, then there, we we get nothing else. Yeah. Iron Man 2 would have been the last movie. Wow. Was, wow. One movie would have <laughs> break yeah. break or make fucking yeah. Marvel. Wow. Yeah. But anyway, that's why, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, brother. I, I think uh, I think I'm gonna cut I cut uh I think right now it's time to end the podcast. Uh yes. I'm trying to play some games here. All right. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. To yeah. everybody that you know that tuned into the live stream, I hope you enjoyed it. I want to shout out Jay Fonz for tuning in. I want to thank you for tuning in. That's why I dropped okay. it in the sixty frame no lag DM right there because I figured it. somebody somebody will just show up. You know what I'm saying? But you're gonna be here Friday because I'm pretty sure this conversation is gonna talk. I can't wait to hear Kratos damage control. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I think I'm on Friday. I, I can do it. I can. Yeah, do it. it's, it's gonna be two. It's gonna be eight p.m. 8 p.m. Eastern. Oh, yeah, I'll be here. Yeah, I'm Friday, I'll 8 p.m. Eastern and stuff like that. But anyway, hey, to everybody in the chat, thank you so much for rocking out with us. Um, Let me know, let us know in the comment section what you think. Um, Let me make sure before I leave, did anybody else leave a super chat because the screen was going 100 miles an hour? Uh, <laughs> no, because, you know, I want to make sure I, don't, I didn't miss anybody. Okay, yep. All right, so that's it, man. All right, anyway, we're out of here. This is your boy, Porter Rock 77. Your only friends in the YouTube street. I will check you out. And everybody go harass Emperor for losing MPD. Peace.